All right, you guys. The red lens I would recommend for a lot of people would be the 50 millimeter. But today I'm not talking about the 50 millimeter. I'm talking about a different lens. But before I talk about that lens, I want to tell you guys something. I got this lens a long time. You know what? This is the lens I'm talking about. This is a 70 to 200 millimeter. So I got this lens a long time ago. Well, not this exact lens, but I had a 70 to 200 millimeter. And a long time ago, when I first started photography, everybody has this lens, right? So I'm like, you know what? I need a lens like this. I, I want that lens because it used to be super big. I think it used to be like double the size, right? And I think to myself, that is the lens that's gonna make my picture look so good. As you may know, that is completely not true. Gears and cameras definitely won't make you a better photographer. It will make your picture look better if you know how to use it. But if you don't know how to use it, it won't do you any good. So this lens right here, I got it and I was shooting with it and I just couldn't understand what people were talking about. I didn't know that this lens would condense the background. I didn't know what that even meant. I didn't know why the bokeh was so strong at f4. I didn't know a lot about this lens. Well, like I said, it's not exactly this lens, but the f4 EF version of it. I'm not saying I'm a way better photographer now, but I understand a lot more than I did before. This is the RF 70 to 200 millimeter. And if you guys don't know about this lens, this is a game changer. This lens right here, I've always wanted to have. This new RF version, look how small this is. I'm gonna compare it to my 50 millimeter. Look at the size difference. This is a 50, this is a 70 to 200, and it's like about the same size. It comes with this mount right here, so then when you put it on a tripod, you mount it by the lens because for some bodies, it's actually front heavy because this lens can be heavy. This one particularly isn't, but it can be. If you put like an RP here instead of like the R5, it will be front heavy. That's why they have this. You can actually remove it by twisting this off. When you zoom in to 70 or maybe even 200, you condense the background, meaning the background of your subject, if you're shooting a model or something like that, whatever's in the background is gonna seem a lot closer to that subject. That's what this lens does. So you'll see some pictures where you'll see a car in the front and the mountains in the back. For some reason, the mountain looks super close to the car. That's because they're using a really, really far zoom lens and that condenses that mountain, which brings it closer to the car. So if you're using like a 50 millimeter, it won't condense it that much. So that's the benefit of this lens. Also, the fact that it makes it look really real. Like I think 70 millimeter is like the closest to real life, to closest to what you actually see with your eyes. As in, not the distant wise, but like how a person look. 70 millimeter is what I think when you take a picture, a portrait, that that person looks like that in real life. When you're shooting with a 50, maybe even a 35, 50 is good if you stand further away. But like if you're shooting with a 35 millimeter, sometimes the face seems a little bit more flat. That's because the lens actually stretched things out. And then you shoot with a 12 millimeter, I'm telling you right now, the face is gonna look super stretched and it's gonna look super weird. This lens right here, you can shoot a lot of stuff. So things that you can't get close to, right? If you're shooting a car racing, if you're shooting sports, if you're shooting something from really far away, like a boat in the river or a building that you can't get to, the 70 to 200 is definitely a great lens. This lens is now in my camera bag and I love it. This one particularly, it's super lightweight. And I know you guys already know about this lens a lot. And in stabilizer, you have on, and then you also have one, two, and three stabilization. It has autofocus and it has full zoom. You can zoom here, it does expand, so it doesn't stay that small and compact. And then make sure you lock it when you put it in a bag so it doesn't accidentally zoom when you're not using it. It also has a ring focus right here. And right here in the back is the RF signature ring. This one can be set to ISO or aperture or other stuff too, but I always set this as ISO. Inside, you can see the glass is humongous. Look at how big the glass is. This lens is definitely not a cheap lens. To be honest, if you guys were to buy this lens, it's definitely gonna break your bank. This is a $2,700 lens, actually $2,799. A very expensive lens. For a lot of people, this is probably more expensive than your camera bodies. If you guys get this, you're definitely sticking with your brand. And you know, I have the 50 millimeter, the 70 to 200, and then the 16 to 35. Well, the 16 to 35 is just for video, that's it and this one and this one's for portrait and you know now i do a lot of shoot photography so these two is a must have let me show you guys this this part right here 
I at first didn't know what it was until I watched some videos and then I found out from Frono Photos. He was saying like it's meant for the ring right here. If you had an ND filter, you can turn it through this cap. That's how cool it is. All right, when you close it, you don't want to get light through and then you'll shoot it like just like this. Sometimes I hold this and the camera. I have the R5 with me right there, so I can't really guys show you guys. This is my new favorite lens. The Canon RF 70 to 200 millimeter f 2.8. Should I take this out to do some street photography? Let me know in the comment below if you guys want to see that video. Other than that, you guys, make sure you hit that like button. Subscribe if you guys haven't already. My name is Andy and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.